Hey guys, I'm Jason Inman. And I'm Tiffany Smith. On today's show, we're checking in with the cast of Legends of Tomorrow to get a look ahead at season one. Plus, DC is amping up its YouTube presence and we have all the details. So, get, get ready, ready for, for DC, DC All Access. Access. YouTube is about to get a lot more heroic with the launch of DC Fans' YouTube channel on Monday, November 30th. The new channel is dedicated to you, the fans, from the diehards to the newbies. So get ready to click subscribe on Monday, and maybe one day soon, you'll see yourself on the DC Fans' YouTube page. On the publishing side, the wait is finally over, and we can all get our hands on Dark Knight 3, the master race number one, starting tomorrow. With Frank Miller back at the helm with Brian Azzarello, plus insane artwork from Andy Kubert and Klaus Janssen, you do not want to miss the conclusion to one of the greatest Batman stories ever told. In DC Collectibles news, the Batman the Animated Series Batmobile is available in stores now and just in time for the holidays. It's probably too big to be a stocking stuffer, but it conveniently comes in a box that's begging to be gift wrapped for the 90s child in your family. Vertigo continues to offer up cutting-edge storytelling with next week's The Sheriff of Babylon, number one. The story is set in Baghdad and is based on writer Tom King's real-life experience in the CIA. We've got Tom here along with artist Mitch Jarrett to brief us on the new series. It's a crime novel. It's like True Detective, but it's set in Iraq in the time I was there in 2004, a year after the invasion. Sort of when we went from where we thought we were totally winning the war to what the war has become for my generation. Like, we, there's this generation of who spent the aughts doing this crazy battle that never ended and we never got resolution on it. Like, that's what the book's about, right? And it's about those small details. Like, when I was in Iraq, it was full of cats because there was a rat problem and they didn't had no way to solve it and eventually they brought in a bunch of cats. So everywhere you go, in this weird war environment, you'd see adorable cats that you'd pet. So I, 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 I put that in. Mitch, what's it been like for you capturing the essence of Iraq from 2004? Uh, it's been, I, I'm so exhaustive with research, it's been great kind of nailing things and like Tom uses a lot of very specific places that are or were actually there and I've spent hours recreating those places. So I, my, my, my biggest goal is for people to read that book who might have been there and go, holy crap, I was at that cafe. Over the past several weeks, Arrow and The Flash have been setting up DC's Legends of Tomorrow by introducing new characters and shifting directions for some old favorites. We've got the cast and crew here to give us a preview of DC's Legends of Tomorrow season one. This is as crazy a thing as I've ever been involved with and ever heard of. Trying to do like a feature film, ensemble, time travel, superhero show every week. I mean, in like the pilot, there was a scene that took us like three days to shoot with like air rams and pyrotechnics and people on wires and the Adam blasting people in his suit and shooting it at 60 frames in a 6K camera and there was a moment where I really, it, it just looked like Apocalypse Now and had this moment of being like, oh, I know why Coppola went crazy. There's loads of action. I lost, I've, I've lost my voice moment because I've been, I was doing a big fight sequence. It's the first kind of fight stuff I've had to do and I just get really overexcited about it. Me just going, ah! you know, it's, it's cool and like everyone, all the stun guys are so good and like Katie Lotz who's on the show is so good at fighting. I'm like, Jesus, like how do you do that? Definitely a lot of uh, using the, the miniaturization aspect of, of Adam. So people will be happy about that. I'm happy about that and makes some, some really cool fighting and storyline stuff to, to use it that way and as we're exploring different and creative ways to use that ability. We've been doing a lot of harness training and, and I get to go up and actually fly all the time which is really cool. At present she's just learning how to fly <laughs> and I think the first thing is conquering the wings and the flying. Having wings come out of your back I think is a pretty traumatic experience. <laughs> I can't wait to see the wings. I, I can't wait to see what visual effects does with that. Uh, I can't wait to see myself fly. It's so corny but when I was you know flying through the air with the cables I was like I can't wait to see this. And then uh, honestly, the dynamic between Hawkman and Hawkgirl. I'm hoping it'll be as fun as it felt uh, between CR and I when we were shooting, and I hope the audience in enjoys what I enjoyed about it. It's just a real nice connection and, and fun. At first, she doesn't remember him, so he's clearly like remembering all of our past lives and relationships, and I'm like, you're a psycho, who are you? <laughs> the dynamics will be very, uh, like a bickering old couple that really loves each other but likes to fight because 
he's coming from the angle of, hey, I love you and you love me, we'll get to that point fast. But, you know, a lot of this is, is Hawk Girl's origin and he's helping her, you know, find the warrior, helping her figure out and remember her past lives. I think leaders will pop out from episode to episode. People have certain skill sets. So one episode, Leonard Snart might be the one who knows about breaking into something, or Ray might know something about technology, so he'll take the lead, uh, or Sarah, about fighting. What's so great about it is everyone's so individual, and it's like, I always see it as that thing I used to do with my action figures, where you get all your favorite action figures together and have like, one big battle with them all. It's like, it, it's reminiscent of that. I can't believe that I'm shooting a show that has a, a time-traveling spaceship in it. Like, I had the first moment of walking around the, the Wave Rider, and I was, I was with Mark Guggenheim, and we were just like, had that sort of geek moment of being like, this is like a childhood dream fulfilled. Like, I don't know if either of us knew that that itch needed scratching, but you're like, yes, this is awesome. The holidays are right around the corner, and we've got the perfect gift for the DC superfan in your life. We're giving away eight different hardcovers that celebrate 75 years of DC characters, including Flash, Robin, and Green Lantern. For your chance to win, make sure you click subscribe, and then let us know in the comments below who is your favorite DC hero or villain of all time. For me, I would probably have to go with Batman. I would have to say Nightwing. Also, in your comment, don't forget to include the phrase, my DCAA entry. That's it for now, but if you're craving more DC All Access, check out all those videos right over there. And be sure to check out some of our special holiday programming, including a special Artist Academy video series and more surprises.